Welcome back again. We continue our Nulitaire playthrough of Liberty or Death. Once again, Nulitaire here means uh, zero players, so we're playing all the bots against each other. Right now, we're about halfway through uh, the year. Uh, there have been two winter quarters rounds so far, and we're about, as I say, halfway through the next uh, the next year. So let's continue on with the next card. The first card is Martha Washington to Valley Forge, and the Patriots are first eligible. The event says women step in to bolster support and raise money. Patriot resources plus five. The Patriots have a, a lot of resources, really. They're at seven. Um, but they're going to jump at the chance to get more resources. Okay. So the uh, fourth bullet point in their event or command box. The event adds three or more Patriot resources. Sure does. Okay, so the Patriots will take the event and add five resources. The British are up next. They can take a full command and special activity. So looking at their flow chart, uh, their resources are greater than zero, barely. They have one resource. Okay, ten or more British regulars on the map and rebels control a city without a rebel fort. No. The... There is no city with rebel control. Available British regulars greater than 1d6. Yes, there are seven available British regulars, so the die roll is irrelevant. So, um, a British bot is going to muster. Okay, so we remember that mustering, um, regulars can be placed in any one city that's not blockaded or an adjacent colony or the West Indies. Okay, any city that's not blockaded or an adjacent colony. Well, no cities are blockaded right now. And every city is adjacent to, or sorry, every colony is adjacent to at least one city. So that means that British bot can select any city or colony for the regulars. All right. So for placing regulars, here are the priorities. Place, reg place regulars first in neutral or passive. Within that first to add British control, then where Tories are the only British units, then elsewhere within each first in highest population. All right. For given the state of the board, that means... British bot is going to choose a neutral or passive space where adding six regulars will give them control and they want to choose the highest population. Okay, so there, there are a couple of two population spaces that qualify. Okay, they're not going to choose New York City because it's not neutral or passive, it's an active. But they could choose Maryland, Delaware, or they could choose North Carolina. Those are both two population spaces. They're adjacent to cities, they're not blockaded, and they're at neutral or passive. So they're going to choose one of those two. British bot rolls a 6-2. That gives them Charlestown. Following it around, we get North Carolina. Okay, so British bot is going to put six regulars in North Carolina to take control of that space. Now British bot can consider placing Tories. But they are out of resources. They only had one resource at the beginning of this turn, and they just spent it uh, to place those regulars. Well, to select North Carolina. All right, so carrying on with the muster command here. Uh, then place Tories. First war regulars are the only British queues. Within that, first war regulars were just placed. Okay, because they don't have any resources, the only space they can choose is the one they've already paid for, which is North Carolina. So they will place two Tories there. That costs them nothing because they've already paid for that space. Okay, so nowhere else they can place Tories because they cannot select any more spaces. But third bullet point here, then in one space, first one already selected, no, can't select anymore. If opposition greater than support plus a D3 or no British ports available, reward loyalty. Well, they can't reward loyalty because they don't have any money. Reward loyalty costs money, one resource per level. Okay, so they can't do that. And, um, oh, sorry, and on to the next uh, sub-bullet point there. If no reward loyalty, place a fort in a colony with five or more British cubes and no British fort. Well, they can't do that either simply because uh, all their forts are on the board. Okay, so that's the end of the command phase for the British. There's nothing more they can do. For their special activity, the British would like to skirmish 
but skirmish requires a space with British regulars and rebellion pieces. And there are no such spaces on the board right now. Rebellion pieces uh, are managing to stay away from the British regulars uh, at this point. All right, so instead they will use naval pressure, which since the Treaty of Alliance has not been played yet, uh, F and I equals zero, and so they'll simply take 1d3 resources. They already rolled, and they got a two, so they will add two resources, and that's the end of the British bot turn. The next card is Josiah Martin, North Carolina Royal Governor Plots. The British and the Patriots are both ineligible, so the French player is uh, first eligible. The event says North Carolina Tories targeted. Patriots may free march to then free battle in North Carolina. Well, that's kind of interesting. I mean, the, the British just put those um, regulars and Tories in North Carolina. But uh, the Patriots can't really march there in battle. I mean, the only piece that's even <laughs> adjacent to North Carolina, the only Patriot piece is that uh, single militia in the Southwest. Unlikely. <laughs> they would want to march it there and, and battle uh, the British. But, but anyway, it's a French bot's turn. And so uh, the Venner Command Box, uh, they're not going to take this event, of course. Okay, so moving on. French resources greater than zero. Yes, they're at seven. The Treaty of Alliance has not been played. Patriot resources less than a D3. Well, the Patriots are flush with cash. They've got 12 resources right now, so the answer to that is no. Uh, therefore, the French will use French agent mobilization. Place two militia, or if not possible, one continental in Quebec, New York, New Hampshire, or Massachusetts. First to add most Patriot control, then more most Patriot units. All right, well, the Patriots already control three of those four spaces, Quebec, uh, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. The only of those four they don't control is New York, and there's no way that placing two militia there is going to give them control. Okay, so the French will simply choose the space that has the most Patriot units, which, of course, is, is Massachusetts once again. So the French use French agent mobilization to place two militia in Massachusetts. And since the French are first eligible, they actually get to use a special activity. They've been struggling to use special activities this entire game. Okay, so they're going to use Préparer la Guerre. Move one blockade from unavailable to the West Indies. If none, move up to three French regulars from unavailable to available. Okay, so they will move three more French regulars from unavailable to available. That moves French prep up three more, and it is now at 17. Therefore, the French may play the Treaty of Alliance. They just have to have more than 15 for French prep to play it, okay? So uh, French pieces available, plus blockades available, plus cumulative British casualties is greater than 15, and it is now at 17. However, French bot has special instructions on this. They will play the Treaty of Alliance if the squadrons in the West Indies, plus available French regulars, plus half of cumulative British casualties is greater than 15. In other words, they only count half of the cumulative British casualties when determining uh, when determining whether or not they want to play the Treaty of Alliance. Okay, well, British cas cumulative British casualties right now is at two. It's right there. So they're only going to consider half of that. Well, that still gives them more than 15 because French prep right now is counting two for British casualties. So if we only consider half of that, that's still 16. Okay, so in other words, French bot is now looking to play the Treaty of Alliance and join the war. However, it is a brilliant stroke card, so there are some requirements. Um, the second point here is that the French faction must be eligible. They're not eligible right now because they just took their turn. The first eligible faction is not yet taken in action, and no winter, card, winter quarters card is showing. What that means is more than likely, when the French become eligible again, in probably two cards, they will play the Treaty of Alliance. Okay, well, Indian Bot is up next. They can either take the event or a limited command. For the Indians, we see the sword icon under their uh, faction icon, so they are gonna automatically skip taking the event. They're gonna look for a limited command instead. Okay, support plus a d6 greater than opposition. Yes, support is way higher than opposition, so the roll of the dice is irrelevant. Gather would place two or more villages. 
or a D6 is less than the available war parties. Well, Gather wouldn't place any villages right now, but there are 11 available war parties, so no matter what the die roll is, the answer there will be uh, yes. So Indianbot is going to gather. Place villages where room and three plus war parties. Well, there are no spaces like that. So on to the next bullet point. Then place war parties at villages. First where enemies, then where no underground war parties, then with Indian leader, then elsewhere. All right, well, there are two spaces with Indian village and no, with Indian villages and no war parties. That's the Northwest and the Southwest. The Patriots, <clears throat> a few turns ago, wiped out all the war parties in those two spaces. So Indian bot would like to gather in one of those two spaces. Since they only have a limited command here, they only get to choose one of them. So they're going to choose randomly from those two. Indian bot rolls a 1-1. One, one. That gives them Quebec City, but following it down, we get to Northwest first. So Indian bot will choose Northwest to gather for its limited command. Because this is an Indian Reserve province, this doesn't cost them anything, so they'll do this for free. The next card is Marquis de Lafayette arrives in colonies, but the upcoming card is Winter Quarters, so um, it came up rather quickly. It's kind of a short year, but we now pause and do a Winter Quarters round. As I did during the last Winter Quarters round, I'll do this fairly Quickly, I'll just give summaries of each of the phases here so we can work through it uh, fairly quickly. Okay, so we need to check for victory first. If any faction has met its victory conditions, the game is over. Well, I've said in the last two rounds that uh, support, the difference between support and opposition must be at least 10 for any faction to have met its victory conditions, and that is now the case. Support is way larger than uh, opposition right now. So the first aspect of the winning conditions for the British and the Indians has been satisfied. So the British say support exceeds opposition by more than 10 and cumulative rebellion casualties is greater than cumulative British casualties. Okay, well, the first part has been satisfied. Support does exceed opposition by more than 10. So the question is, does cumulative British casualties, sorry, is, are, <laughs> are, the cumulative, are the cumulative rebellion casualties greater than the cumulative British casualties? The answer to that is no, but just barely. So uh, cumulative British casualties are at two and cumulative rebellion casualties are at one. So the British do not meet their victory conditions. Okay, what about the Indians? Support exceeds opposition by more than 10, yes. And villages less three is greater than Patriot forts. Um, in other words, the difference between these two must be in the favor of the Indians. Okay, these are offset by three to make it easy to see. Right now, the Patriots are winning the forts versus villages game. So the Indians do not satisfy that second condition. Therefore, they're not at victory either. So, um, no faction is at victory right now. The supply phase is next. The, during this phase, the British, um, had, there were only two spaces where British were not in supply, and that's uh, North Carolina and uh, in New York. The British elected to leave New York because it's already at active support, so there's no reason to stay there. They might have stayed if they could reward loyalty there, but they can't anymore. So they paid one resource to stay in North Carolina uh, in hopes of rewarding loyalty there. Okay, the Patriots uh, were all in supply except for the two militia in these Indian Reserve provinces. Uh, but Patriots remove one for every two units that they don't pay for. So they can stay if they only have one piece. So they elected not to pay, and they can stay there for free. The French are obviously not on the map yet. So um, there was no reason to consider them in supply. And the Indian war parties are all in supply. They're all in Indian Reserve provinces or here in New York where there are villages. Okay. And, of course, uh, the West Indies battle does not happen because the Treaty of Alliance has still not been played. The resource phase is next. 
the British gained 12 resources, uh, the population of all the cities that they control, plus the number of forts, that's 12 for them. The uh, Indians gained three resources, half the number of villages, so they're now at four resources. It's the most they've had all game. The Patriots gained um, uh, six resources. That put them all the way up at 18. They have the most money right now. And the French gained uh, twice the number of squadrons in the West Indies. Uh, so that's six, and that put them up to 12. The next phase is the support phase. And the British had three spaces they could select to reward loyalty. They need uh, spaces with British control, regulars, and Tories. And so they could select uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Norfolk, and North Carolina. Um, those three spaces were not yet at active support. Okay. So um, the British paid five resources to shift all of those to, to active support. Norfolk was already a passive, so it only cost one resource. That pushed total support all the way up to 34. Okay. And then the Patriots c considered using committees of correspondence, but there were no spaces where they could do so. The only spaces where they have control and pieces uh, already are at active opposition. Um, or... It, Quebec, which is always neutral. Okay. So on to the redeployment phase. First, we check for leader change. The first faction on the next card is the French. However, they have not yet entered the war, and the rules tell us uh, the French do not make leader changes until after the Treaty of Alliance has been played. Okay. So there'll be no leader change this round. Leader redeployment is next. Uh, corn planter wants to stay with, uh, sorry, wants to go to a space with uh, enough war parties to, to put in a village. Okay, but there are no spaces on the board where that's the case. So, in, so as an alternative, he goes to the space with the most war parties. Therefore, he moved to the northwest where there are three war parties. Okay, Howe wants to stay with the most British regulars, so he stays in Norfolk, and Washington wants to stay with the most Continentals, so he stays in Massachusetts. The next thing to consider is the British release date, but uh, all the British pieces are now available. And then lowering FNI, but that doesn't take place until after the Treaty of Alliance. So we move on to the desertion phase. During the desertion phase, the Patriots had 13 militia on the map and 11 Continentals, and therefore they had to remove two of each of those. They had to remove one and five. Uh, and the Indians get to choose first, and then the Patriots select uh, any remaining. So the, the Indians wanted to take out militia that were in a village space, so they had a choice between southwest and northwest. Um, they chose randomly between those two and came up with the Northwest. Interestingly, um, you know, the Southwest would have been a, a better strategic choice, obviously, because there are no war parties there, and there are war parties there. But anyway, that's what uh, Indian Bot did. And the Patriots took one militia out of Massachusetts. The two Continentals both came from Massachusetts, of course, because that's the only space that had any Continentals. Tory desertion is next. The British had 17 Tories on the map, so they need to remove three. The French get to choose the first one, and they wanted to remove the most control, so they chose the one Tory that was in Quebec City, so the British lose control there. The British chose the other two, and they wanted to lose the least control possible and not take the last Tory out of a space. So there were a couple of spaces to choose from. Uh, they chose randomly and ended up taking one Tory out of Philadelphia, and one Tory out of North Carolina. Uh, the reset phase is next. Um, that means all factions are now eligible. All of the militia and war parties on the board have gone back underground. The casualties have gone back to available. And uh, raid and propaganda would have been removed. There wasn't any raid or propaganda on the map, interestingly. 
Um, so uh, this year there was none of that. Okay, um, we also resolved the event on the Winter Quarters card. If cumulative rebellion casualties is greater than cumulative British casualties, British resources minus three, else French resources minus three. So the French lost three resources, bringing them down to 11, or sorry, nine. Okay, so that's the end of the Winter Quarters round. On to the next card. The next card, Marquis de Lafayette arrives in colonies. A very fitting card, really, uh, to have at this moment because uh, the French are going to now play the Treaty of Alliance and join the war. Because the Treaty of Alliance is a brilliant stroke card, it takes the place of the current event, and the French will now uh, perform the actions on the card. It says French enter the war. French free muster and place Rochambeau there. Raise F and I one level. Okay, let's do that part first before we move on to the next part. The French muster command says that uh, it can happen in any one colony or city with rebellion control or the West Indies. All right, well, the only possible spaces here are Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Uh, Quebec is rebellion control, but that's not a colony, so they can't, can't muster there. So they're going to choose one of those two. So looking at the uh, muster space on their flowchart, since they're using a free command here, they, they use their flowchart uh, to decide how to do it. Okay, it says, um, the first bullet, if fewer than four French regulars are available in West Indies, is not rebel controlled muster in the West Indies. All right, well, we're not doing that right now. We're looking for a, a city or colony. Otherwise, muster first in a colony or city with continentals than elsewhere. All right, well, that makes the choice pretty obvious. They're going to muster in Massachusetts. Okay, and the command says <clears throat> place up to four regulars there. Okay, so the French are going to use <clears throat> free muster in Massachusetts to place four regulars from available, and Rochambeau is going to go with them. Okay, once again, it's getting pretty crowded <laughs> in Massachusetts. Now, I said in an earlier video that I, I don't like to use the overflow boxes. Now, that's something you can do. You can put an overflow marker uh, in a space and then move all, the, move all the pieces to an overflow box. But I don't like to do that just because uh, I think it takes away some of the visual uh, you know, cues in the game. I like to see adjacency and, and, and things like that. And it's, it's hard to see that when you got a bunch of pieces sitting in, in an overflow box. All right, so I'll just cram everything in there. And I just know that uh, Rochambeau and his regulars are there in Massachusetts with Washington and his troops. Okay, so the next part of the Treaty of Alliance says we're going to raise FNI one level. So we'll do that next. So the French naval intervention has now gone up to level one. And that means that one of the squadrons in the West Indies is going to become a blockade uh, of one of the cities. All right, and the at first I thought that the French bot didn't give any indication of how to choose among those cities. There's nothing in this uh, you know special instruction box at the bottom of their... Um, flowchart that says anything about where to place squadrons. Now, I mean, naval pressure allows them to place a blockade, and it gives instructions, but we're not using naval pressure here. The, the, the Treaty of Alliance doesn't say use, you know, free naval pressure or anything like that. It just says move F and I up one level. And uh, it's just automatic that when F and I goes up one level, a squadron moves from the West Indies into the uh, into one of the cities and becomes a blockade. Okay, so it seems like there's no instructions at all. So I was like, well, well what do we do? Do we just choose randomly here? But uh, going to the rule book, um, events that shift support and opposition. And this is an event, you know, the Treaty of Alliance, and every brilliant stroke card is an event card. And uh, this would shift support or opposition because when you put a blockade in a city, uh, the support is no longer counted. Or, you know, to be more specific, the, the, um, the population of the city is considered zero for calculating support. So this is an event 
that does shift to support or opposition. Okay, so it seems like French bot should use uh, these priorities. Okay, so a rebellion faction goes for the highest gain in opposition or then the highest loss in support. Well, then it seems like they should choose the city uh, to blockade that has the highest support right now which makes perfect, you know, strategic sense. They should, they should blockade New York City, uh, which I think is exactly what French bot is going to do. So even though we're not given any special instructions on the, you know, specifically from the French uh, flow chart, I think this general priority of shifting support and opposition comes into play here and uh, makes the uh, decision about where the blockade will be placed. Okay, so the French will move one squadron from the West Indies and be, it will become a blockade in New York City. I tend to place the blockades in such a way that I cover up the support marker uh, because blockades are such that the, you know, the support is not considered anymore uh, there. However, I, you know, I don't want to remove it from the space because if the blockade moves, then that support will go right back. So anyway, that's the uh, way I do it. I like visual reminders of what's happening uh, on the board. Okay, so so British support is now, it moves down four to 30. Okay, the next part of the Treaty of Alliance says, place three French and three British regulars, first from unavailable, then if necessary from available, in the West Indies. Well, the French timed this perfectly because they happen to have three unavailable uh, regulars. The British only have two regulars uh, available, so they're only gonna move two there. So the rebellion takes control of the West Indies, which is now in play. All right, so the Treaty of Alliance card is now uh, concluded. All factions are back to eligible and we move on to the next card. The next card is French and Spanish Besiege Gibraltar. Uh, now it's been my experience playing this game uh, in the past that after the Treaty of Alliance, uh, the other Brilliant Stroke cards tend to get played pretty quickly. I said in an earlier video in this series that uh, you can safely ignore the Brilliant Stroke cards until the Treaty of Alliance because none of the bots will play them until, until that occurs. But it's now time to consider playing Brilliant Stroke cards because the Tree of Alliance has now been played. So we need to consider that. So looking at the, the um, non-player faction of uh, flow charts, down at the bottom here, this is the Patriots. Uh, it says, Brilliant Stroke, use after Treaty of Alliance when Washington is in a space with four or more continentals and a player faction is first eligible. Okay, well, we're playing nullitaire here, so there, in, a, in a sense there are no player factions. Or rather, I like to think of all the bots as players, so I would say that they're all players. Um, so the way I interpret this nullitaire is they're saying a player faction besides the Patriots. Any faction besides the Patriots is first eligible. Okay, and that is the case right now. Washington's in a space with more than four uh, Continentals. And uh, the Patriots are not first eligible right now. The French are. So the Patriots would like to play their brilliant stroke right now. But that's also true of the Indians... Their brilliant stroke. Use after the Treaty of Alliance when the Indian leader is in a space with three or more war parties. And a player is first eligible. So, again, uh, you know, any other faction. Or a rebel faction plays a brilliant stroke card. Okay. So two reasons <laughs> why the Indians want to play brilliant stroke here. First, the Patriots want to play theirs, so they'd like to trump that. But also, um, the Indian leader is in a space with three or more war parties, corn planters in the Northwest with three war parties. So that also makes them want to play their brilliant stroke. Okay. But what about the British? Well, looking at their brilliant stroke, use after the Treaty of Alliance, if British leader with four or more British regulars, 
which is the case. Howe is in Norfolk with 10 British regulars. Um, and Rebel player is first eligible. Or Patriots play their brilliant stroke. Well, once again, the Patriots are playing their brilliant stroke, so the British would like to trump it. Okay. And a Rebel player is first eligible. The, the French are. So the British would also like to play their burning stroke right now. <laughs> Everybody wants to get in on the action. All right, well, what about the French? I mean, they are first eligible right now, so it seems unlikely, but let's take a look at what it says. Brilliant stroke, used after the Treaty of Alliance, when the French leader is in a space with four or more French regulars, which he is, and any player faction is first eligible. Or the British play their brilliant stroke. Well, that last bit <laughs> would make them want to play it. Um, so essentially, everybody wants to play their brilliant stroke card right now. Um, so who gets to? Well, the faction that trumps everybody, and that's the Indians. So the Indians will play their brilliant stroke card now. So the Indian brilliant stroke card says execute, uh, execute, excuse me, <clears throat> execute two free limited commands and one special activity in any order. Leader must be involved in at least one of the limited commands. Okay, well, looking at the rule book here for how brilliant stroke cards are played, uh, this paragraph says, to execute a brilliant stroke event other than the Treaty of Alliance, follow the executing faction's flowchart to select the first limited command that both matches the flowchart priorities and can involve that faction's leader. Okay, so the card says one of these limited commands must involve the leader, so the rules for the bots are telling us let's do that one first. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that one first. Okay, so going down the Indian bot flow chart here, support plus a D6 greater than opposition. Yes, yeah, support is way bigger than opposition, so the rules are relevant. Gather would place two or more villages. No, not with a limited command. Or a D6 is less than the available war parties. Yes, there are eight available war parties right now, so no matter what we roll, the answer to that is yes. So Indian bot would like to gather. Uh, place, but remember, we're looking for uh, a command, limited command that involves the leader. So we're looking for a way to involve Corn Planter in this. And he's in the northwest there. Okay, so the first part of gather, place villages where room and three or more war parties. Well, there's no room in northwest for villages. It's all full up. So move on. Then place war parties at villages. First where enemies, then where no underground war parties, then with Indian leader, then elsewhere. Okay, well, they can do that. So Indian bot will use their first limited command to gather in Northwest. So the Indians get three new war parties in the Northwest. Um, carrying on with this paragraph in the rule book, it says, uh, use the flow chart to select the special activity to match the first command, but if possible, execute it independently, i.e. ignoring what spaces were selected for a limited command muster or garrison command when executing a skirmish special activity. Then use the flowchart again to select the second limited command. Okay, so we're gonna go for the special activity next. So we just follow along the flowchart from gather. It says then warpath. Okay, if Indian resources greater than zero trade. Well, they're at four right now. Uh, otherwise warpath, first to remove a Patriot fort, then most rebel pieces within that first in a province with one or more villages then elsewhere. Okay, well, Warpath requires a space with underground war parties and rebellion pieces. And there's only one such space on the map, and that's Quebec. So um, Indian bot will use Warpath in Quebec. They'll activate their underground war party and remove one of those militia. So now the Indian bot selects another limited command. Uh, using flowchart priorities, but this time the leader does not have to be involved. Okay, so going down the flowchart once again, support plus a d6 greater than opposition, yes. Gather or place two more villages, no. Or 1d6 less than available war parties. Well, there are now five available war parties. Um, so we did have to roll on that. And the Indians rolled a two. So the answer is, um, the answer is yes. Two is less than five. Okay, so they'd like to gather. Place villages where room and three or more war parties. Um, there's no such space right now. 
So the second bullet point. Then plays war parties at villages. First we're enemies. Ah, okay. So this time they're going to gather at Southwest because there's that Patriot militia sitting there. And the Indian leader does not have to be a part of this. So they can, they can select this space this time. So their second limited command, they're going to gather in the Southwest. So Indian Bot places three new war parties in the Southwest with their second free limited command. Okay, so that concludes their uh, brilliant stroke. On to the next card. Oh, all, fact, all factions go to eligible at the end of a brilliant stroke. So all factions are once again eligible and we're on to the next card. The next card is Thaddeus Kosciuszko, expert engineer. And once again, everybody <laughs> wants to play their brilliant stroke card. Um, except for the Patriots, because they're first eligible. But both the British and the French would like to play their British, uh, sorry, <laughs> would like to play their brilliant stroke card now. So um, it goes in, so who gets to play it depends on uh, the Trump's priority. Um, so the French get to play theirs because they trump Patriot or British brilliant strokes. So the French will now play their brilliant stroke card. So just like with the last Brilliant Stroke card, we will use the French faction's order of priorities on their flow chart to select the first limited command, and Rochambeau must be involved with that one. Then we'll use the special activity that's associated with that command, and then we'll go back and use the flow chart again to select another limited command. Okay, so going down the Flow chart here for the French. French resources greater than zero. Yes, they are at nine resources. The Treaty of Alliance has now been played. Oh, so we actually get to see the rest of this faction fold out now. <laughs> 1d6 is less than the available French regulars. Well, there are eight French regulars available right now. So no matter what the role is, the answer to that question will be yes. So the French would like to muster. And again, we're looking for something that will involve Rochambeau. Okay. So in one space with rebel control or the West Indies, first bullet point, if fewer than four French regulars are available and West Indies is not rebel controlled, muster in the West Indies. Well, we can't use that here because Rochambeau is not involved. In any case, the rebels control the West Indies. Otherwise, muster first in a colony or city with continentals, then elsewhere. Well, okay. So the French would like to use muster to um, add more of their regulars into Massachusetts. So that will be the first limited command they use, and the leader is involved in that. We now select the special activity that goes along with the muster command, and that is skirmish. So it says, in one space with both French and British, not selected for battle or muster, first the West Indies. Well, it turns out the West Indies is the only space that has uh, French and British in it. So that is where British uh, French bot would like to skirmish. Remove first a British fort, then most British cubes. Okay, we're looking at the skirmish special activity for the French. Uh, it says procedure, remove one British cube or two British cubes and one French regular. Or if no British cubes, remove one British fort and one French regular. Cubes and forts are removed to casualties. Okay, so the second option is what the French are going to take because they want to remove the most British possible. And that will completely eliminate the British from the, the West Indies. Okay, so they'll remove two British cubes and one French regular from the West Indies, and that will be their special activity. The French now choose their next free limited command. And this time they just use their flow chart and Rochambeau does not have to be involved in this. So French resources greater than zero, yes, they're at nine. Treaty of Alliance has been played. 1d6 less than available French regulars. Well, there are now five available French regulars. So they had to roll on that and they rolled a six. So the answer is no. Rebel cubes plus leader exceed British pieces in a space with both. Well, no, there are no spaces with uh, rebel cubes and uh, British pieces. Okay, so no. All right, so the French would like to march. All right, well, the march command says, um, 
any destination spaces with Patriot pieces or any space if bringing along one or more Continentals. All right, so they either have to move into a space with Patriot pieces already there, or if they're bringing Continentals along with them, they can move anywhere they want. Okay. So the procedure is move regulars to an adjacent space or if in or adjacent to a rebellion controlled city to another rebellion controlled city or a province adjacent, Continentals may accompany French regulars one for one. Okay. So the French um, priorities here say lose no rebel control. Within that, march with as many French regulars and Continentals as possible to add rebellion control, first in cities, within each first in spaces with most British pieces. Okay. Well, these French regulars in Massachusetts are the only pieces that can move here. And the march command says we can move them into an adjacent space or if in or adjacent to a rebellion controlled city to another, to another rebellion controlled city or province. Okay, well they're adjacent to a city, Boston, but that's not rebellion controlled. So they don't have that option to just you know march wherever they want um, through the cities. Okay, um, but they are prioritizing cities here. Uh, it says uh, first in cities. So uh, it looks like the French are going to march into Boston. So they're going to take all of their regulars along with uh, eight Continentals, one for one. And that means Washington and Rochambeau are going to go along with, uh, and they're going to march into Boston. Okay, so now Rochambeau and Washington, together with 16 <laughs> regulars and Continentals, have marched on Boston uh, to take control of that space. And that concludes the French brilliant stroke. All the factions are now eligible once again. Okay, I'm going to end this video here. Um, I have a feeling we're going to see <laughs> the other brilliant stroke cards uh, come out pretty quickly um, in the next uh, video. So stand by for that, and I'll see you then. But wait, <laughs> before we go... Uh, I'm coming to you from the future. <laughs> no literary gaming in the future. So I made a an error in this video. I'm not sure if you have noticed it, but uh, when the French did their skirmish, uh, their special activity on their brilliant stroke card, the British regulars that were removed from the West Indies should have gone to casualties. But that's not where I put them. I put them back in the available box. Um, and I noticed this mistake <laughs> quite a bit later. Um, I've actually filmed two more videos, actually two and a half more videos in this series, so hours of gameplay later before I realized uh, that mistake. And I only found out about it by, you know, I was just watching this video back and I noticed it. Okay, I was, and I was hoping, when I saw the mistake, I was hoping, ah, uh, Maybe it's not a significant mistake. Maybe we get to the winter quarters round, um, you know, before anything significant happens. But it, that turned out not to be the case. Those two uh, British regulars in the available box did make a difference to how the British bot played. So it was a significant enough problem that I decided that I'm going to go back and reshoot those episodes. Um, uh, or parts of them anyway, uh, to correct that error. So in the next video in the series, part seven, you'll see that at the beginning of the video, uh, those British regulars are in the available box, not in the casualties box. Cause, um, so, so basically I'm reshooting the parts of that episode where uh, from the point at which the mistake made a difference. Um, so half of that video will still be okay, uh, but part of it won't. So you'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll butt in in that video and, and uh, and say where the error is, and we'll carry on from that point. Okay, so I just wanted to point out in this video that there is an error here. It doesn't make a difference to gameplay in this video, but it will make a difference in the next one, so I will, um, I will correct that there. Okay, so watch out for that in the next video, and uh, please do let me know. You know, if you spot a mistake that I make somewhere along the way, please do let me know about it. Uh, all right, well, I'll see you next time.